If you're watching this video, perhaps you're looking into applications to help you with your academic or grad work and are using Obsidian or thinking about starting with Obsidian and are looking for some specific approaches and strategies. One of the big challenges of academic work is figuring out structures and workflows that make sense to you and make it easier to accomplish your goals. For me, Obsidian is a fantastic tool that helps me make connections among ideas, develop projects, and even plan for classes. But after using it a bit, I found that I needed to set it up in a way that worked for me, and you're likely trying to figure out what will make it work for you. Now, I care about design and aesthetics, but the way I've set up Obsidian and its appearance is also highly functional. I'm going to explain why my Obsidian setup looks the way that it does and how the specific way I've set it up supports the work that I do, and perhaps you can find some connections to your own work. Now, if you just started using Obsidian or haven't tweaked it much, it probably looks more like this when you open the app. When I'm using Obsidian, it looks more like this. One of the first differences we'll look at is how I'm able to have a ton of files open at any given time and easily toggle among them. So how do I do this? With the community plugin sliding panes Andy's mode. Now why this plugin? When I work with Obsidian, I tend to have several files open at once and like to switch among them without any friction. For instance, here's a file for a course on curricular inquiry that I teach. One of the first things I might do when I open this file is open the files related to assignments and readings related to this particular class. Now I use a Mac, so I click on Command as I open the files so I can open them as separate files while maintaining this file or pane. And I'll keep these open while facilitating the class so I can quickly reference a note or make decisions about where it makes sense to go next. In another context, I might work with some literature notes that I made and then have several other related files on more specific ideas that I might want to update or read to inform something that I'm writing. The Sliding Panes plugin makes it very easy to quickly move among these multiple notes and stay focused on my work. So for me, this plugin helps me manage working among a lot of files in a way that lets me focus on getting things done rather than trying to find things. I've settled on this view where I have the file structure in the top left the local graph view on the bottom left, the calendar on the top right, and then use of tags. And then depending on what I'm working on, I sometimes change the last frame to be links, the day planner. Um, you could change this appearance by toggling different icons in the menu bar. And you can create different setups by using the workspace option. So I would advise playing around with moving frames around and seeing what makes the most sense for your workflow. And if you have particular ways that you might set up different frames particular to specific projects, you could always save them as workspaces. It's a workspace. Temporary workspace, you can use it. So let's take a look back at what Obsidian looks like before changing its appearance. Now when you look at what my Obsidian Vault looks like, you'll notice that the colors and look of the text is different from the default of Obsidian. And this has to do with the theme. I'm using the theme Cybertron by Nick Milo. What I like most about the Cybertron theme is the use of different colors for levels of headings. I use levels of headings to organize my files and ideas, so I find it very valuable to have an overview of how a file is organized by looking across the different colored headers. It's also great to be able to fold and unfold by the heading, which is important when there's a lot of content on a file. I also like the dark mode as I find it easier on my eyes. And all of this is just personal preference, so try out some themes and figure out what works. Work. It's about what works for you. Go to Settings, Appearance, and Themes, and then browse the community themes. Check out the preview, install a couple of them, and play around. And I really recommend spending some time with each theme to see how it works as you're actually using Obsidian for your academic work. That way it's um, very concrete and it's connected to the work that you'll be doing and you'll get a sense of which themes work for you and which themes don't work as well. And Obsidian makes it super easy and flexible to move around different themes. So check them out. Earlier, you might have wondered what was going on in the bottom left pane of Obsidian as I was moving around different files. Now that set of dots and lines is the graph view of the file that I have open at any given point. The graph view of each file or of your entire vault is an extremely helpful and powerful visual aspect of Obsidian. What makes it so powerful? I actually wondered that at first as well. When I first started using Obsidian and didn't have much information in my vault and only a couple of files, the graph view felt like a novelty to me. Like, Shiny objects! Like, ooh, I can zoom in and out of a cool looking network. And when I saw other people's graph views, I was like, okay, that looks cool. Um, but I didn't really see the point of it until I started to have some content and started using it more actively in my own work. 
So once I had a lot of files, the graph view became extremely valuable in helping me identify connections I might not have made otherwise, and I really appreciate the nonlinear way I can engage with my notes and my plans. It's not just the graph itself, but the ways we can modify visual options that make it a really powerful tool. So let's dive into some of the options that might not be super obvious at first. The graph view will default to your theme, so make sure to try out the graph view with some different theme options as I mentioned before. One of the first things you can do is zoom in and out and move the graph around. Now this is pretty obvious and you can figure that out pretty easily. Each dot is a file, but what if you want to know what these files are? As you zoom closer in, you will start to see some of the file names. And you can adjust this with the text fade threshold over here. So play around with your zoom and your text fade threshold to get at the view that works best for you, and you can change it as you go. You can also adjust the node size and the link thickness. I like having the arrows at the end of links to help me see where links are pointing to and from. You can also play around with the forces, but I find that a little less important than what we're about to look at. The point of all this is to make it easier for us to make meaning and connections among the files we have. Sure, it looks cool, but it actually is quite functional and a powerful way to work across your files. The point of all of this is to make it easier for us to make meaning and connections among the files we have. This is also a reason why it makes sense to eventually create files of very specific notes on particular ideas or concepts that draw from multiple sources in addition to the literature notes that might address numerous concepts. But it's this next set of options that make it easier to make sense of the graph view that I think can make a huge difference in the ways that we engage with our files, notes, and ideas. Yeah, no, I love making connections. <laughs> now that we've adjusted the visualization, let's look at how we can adjust what the graph includes or excludes by clicking on the graph settings. The graph settings give us control over what we include or exclude in the graph view. For instance, you can include tags in your graph. Now, depending on the theme, they show up as a different color, and this helps reorganize files in relation to the tags. Where this becomes helpful for me is when I hover over a tag. Now watch what happens. If I put my threshold low and zoom in, it's fairly easy to get a good sense of what files I've assigned a particular tag, and I can get a good overview and then select a file that I might want to engage with. Typically, I leave tags off until I want to look for them specifically. Tags! You can also include attachments in your graph. I don't do this as it would be too much information and add clutter, but you might have a project or case where attachments are important. Maybe you're using Obsidian for research and have an artifact, like a photo of students creating music with a MIDI controller, and want to find all the different files that are connected to that artifact. In that case, this would be quite powerful. You still have too many attachments. Now, people have different perspectives about whether or not to create a link to a file that doesn't yet exist as a placeholder for when you will eventually work on that file. I have several placeholder files when I'm working on something that I want, where I want to create a file for a concept or idea, but don't have the time or capacity at that moment to work on that file, but I want to have that placeholder. I usually keep these hidden in my graph, but I also find it helpful to toggle them on and off as it helps me make connections and think through issues in different ways, and it's at this point when I might want to work on a file that I haven't put any content into yet. And then maybe I toggle it off until I want to engage with my files in this way again. So again, Obsidian makes it super flexible to view the information that I want to view, when I want to view it, and how I want to view it. I actually like to see unlinked files, and the graph view helps me find potential connections. So I see them out there by themselves, and maybe at the time I didn't make a backlink to any other file, but when I see them and I'm working in graph view, I often find connections or make connections that I wouldn't have seen if I was looking at the individual file level. So I find it helpful to have them available to me. Um, again, this is what's really wonderful about the graph view is you can make connections in different ways because of the way that the information is um, visualized. But here's where it gets even more powerful. Now, once you wrap your head around groups, you'll be able to engage with the graph view in new ways that are very productive and generative. What's neat about groups is that the decisions you make as to what groups you create are a way of making meaning of your notes, ideas, and files. That very process helps me make connections and find new ways of interacting with my notes. For instance, one of the ways I use Obsidian is for class planning and facilitating classes. Now I have different types of files that I use for class planning. One of them is called Teaching Ideas. And here's an example of one of my Teaching Idea files. 
The reason this is important to me is that I often use what I call a plan of possibilities approach, and I want to engage with my files non-linearly. The graph view is critical for this, and I want to differentiate between different types of files, such as the file I use for planning a specific day in the course, reference files with notes from readings, and different types of teaching ideas, such as projects, activities, so when creating a group, you determine what characteristic of a note you want to use. I mentioned before not using tags frequently, but here I like to assign certain tags a specific color. To make the teaching ideas I have easy to spot, I like to use a group with a query of tag. Now if I zoom out, you can see pretty easily where the teaching idea notes are, and then zooming in, I can see how a teaching idea might be included in different types of classes, or at different points in the year, so it's super easy to change the color as you like. Then I also like to have a group that is specific to a folder, which will make all files in that folder the color I assign it. This is where folders are really valuable for me. So you can see here that I use path 1.00 courses I teach, and you can see this makes it easy for me to find all the files I use for course planning and facilitating really easily across the graph. I also have a group for all of my reference files related to readings or other texts. And here you can see the path. Now when I zoom in, here's where you can see how I might have started taking notes on a reading and a reference note, but over time I transformed some of those notes into their own files more specific to a particular idea or concept. And with the group of courses I teach, I can see the different classes or resources that connect to a particular reading. Again, helpful ways for me to make sense of the many files I have and to make connections and think across ideas, references, research projects, and classes that I teach. This is such a major improvement from how I once had my notes all located in a folder dedicated to a specific class or spread out all across a Google Drive. Somewhere, somehow, I was going to find what I was looking for. I can't tell you how easy this has made it to plan and move ideas across different contexts in a really flexible manner. I cannot recommend enough trying this out and playing around with different colors and ways to label these files. Um, I think it will make your life easier. And um, even if you already have a great system for organizing everything, there's something about the nonlinear way that you can engage with the graph view that things that you never did before might start to emerge just based on the way that you're engaging with your files. Highly recommend it. Try it out. Let me know how it works for you in the comments. One of the useful ways of interacting with the graph view once you have it visualized and organized in a way that makes sense to you is hovering over specific dots or nodes to identify connections that might not immediately come to mind. So if we, so if we look at this specific class plan, you'll see that I have students engage with an activity that includes Pauline Oliveros' Worldwide Tuning Meditation. And let me know in the comments if you've ever experienced a Worldwide Tuning Meditation. I love experiencing it musically, but I also love using it in classes. Curious if you've ever engaged with it. When I hover over the Worldwide Tuning Meditation activity, I can see other contexts where I use this particular activity. Or I might find a text that I have a file on that connects, or any other types of notes. Now the decisions I made for visualizing files in this graph view are oriented towards the ways I plan my classes. Imagine how you could show different types of information in a research project. For instance, showing all instances of a tag that represents an idea, a code, a participant in a study, or a type of file like interview transcripts. The possibilities are endless. The point here is that the graph view visualization opens possibilities of how we engage with notes, resources, and our own thinking. It encourages a more nonlinear and rhizomatic way of thinking and planning and writing, and I really appreciate the way that Obsidian makes this super easy to do. So another foundational aspect of using Obsidian is figuring out if you want files organized in a particular way, including whether or not you use folders. There are a lot of different and strong perspectives on this. Check out the Obsidian forum and Discord for in-depth discussions. I let my organization develop organically in relationship to how I was actually engaging with my files and my notes, and I suggest you take that approach as well. There are a lot of people who give advice on here's a structure, but you'll notice that they're often being very clear that this is the structure that works for me and it's based on how I actually do my work. So I suggest you do the same thing. Let it emerge organically, but perhaps you can pick up some ideas from the way that I've actually structured my files um, and how I've organized my vaults. What's your system? So I'll take you through my organization here. Now my approach is heavily influenced by Nick Milo's LYT or light approach, linking your thinking. Um, and I'll include a link in the description. I have three types of organizational structures. 
The first are folders. The second are maps of content, or MOCs, that are dynamic tables of contents for specific topics or themes. And the third are the individual files. You can see at the top here I have folders, and sometimes folders within folders, that are numbered. For me, folders are helpful since I use this singular vault for all aspects of my academic work, and without folders it would be incredibly taxing to sift through many different kinds of files to find what I'm looking for, even with search. So this top folder is for files specific to a writing project that I've been working on for a while, and those are the only things that go in there. Next is my folder that's 0.00, .00 references. Anytime I take notes on a reading, I include the one reference file for that reading in this folder. Now, why have, those, why have those notes in the folder and not scattered around my vault? Because I want a single location I can find all my literature notes. Now, eventually, there are key ideas from those literature notes that might become individual notes that are not in this reference folder. But I always want the original file of all the notes from that one reference and that, or that one reading, whatever it is, in this reference folder so that I can go back to it, I can link to it, um, but I want it there so that I can have everything available. And I also want to be able to just scroll through and only see files that are related to reading notes. That's what works for me, but I understand that some people do like to have them um, just integrated with the rest of their vault without them being in a folder. Thanks. I know just where to put that. In this reference folder, you'll notice another folder, 0.01, which is an integration with the app Readwise. I highly encourage you, if you use Readwise, to definitely get the plugin to integrate it with Obsidian, where it will pull all of your notes and put them into um, their own files, and then you can tell it where to put that in your vault. And I have it going to this particular folder. It saves you so much time. I'm saving so much time! If you think it's interesting, let me know, and I'll make another video on that. I highly recommend it. Now, all the folders in my vault that start with the number one are all aspects of my work. 1.00, the courses I teach, is a folder where in that folder are additional folders, each for each folder for a particular class that I teach. Now that I'm using Obsidian for course planning, it makes sense for me to have a separate folder for each course that I teach. These files are specific to planning and teaching. However, I often link from these files to other files across the vault. Having them located in a folder makes it so much easier to find exactly what I'm looking for when I'm planning or teaching. So if I'm gonna work on my curriculum class, I can just go into the folder that says curriculum, and in that folder I have a bunch of files that are assignments, a bunch of files that are class planning files, um, and they're all in that one spot. I don't have to look across my entire vault for those. Having folders for class planning is really helpful. Now you'll see that 1.01 .01 are exercises, activities, and projects. They're exactly what it says. Interestingly enough, the reason why I have a separate folder for this is it used to be the case that I would put these files into separate Google Docs, and they would be often located in the Google Drive folder for the class that I was working on when I developed that activity or exercise. And what I was finding over time was when I would design um, something, maybe it was originally specific to the curriculum class, I would often want to tweak it or modify it slightly to have it work in another class. And I would have to go looking around for, wait, where was that class? Where is it? Where is it? Where what class did I write that exercise for? I want to kind of find it. So I stopped putting anything that's related to an exercise or project, activity, sometimes I call them etudes, in the folder for the class that I even designed it for and have all of the exercises, activities, and projects in a folder that's dedicated to exercise, activities, and projects. And that way I could link from a class to any of those documents and make it easy to link from other files to those documents. And then when I'm in the file for that activity or project, What's kind of neat is I can look at the local graph view and see, oh, I've linked to this particular activity in these three different classes. Interesting. So I think there's some benefit to having them separate and not having them just as a part of a much larger file. There's something really nice about having a file specific to a particular activity and then linking to it and modifying it in other documents. You'll also see that my folder 1.2 are projects related to service. This is committee work, projects, things of that sort. And then 1.3 is interesting. This semester I started using Obsidian as a tool for engaging in qualitative research, and I'm loving it so far. For the longest time, I was using hyper research. Even when I was using hyper research, while I was coding data, I also liked to write along my coding. I used mind maps. I was playing around with Tinderbox for a while. And there's something really nice about the workflow of using Obsidian where I have, for instance, an interview file on one pane 
And then in the other pane, I'm just working through analysis. And in some moments, I'll just be grabbing some text. In other moments, I'm writing about my reflections on it, maybe doing some analysis. Um, I might be putting some codes in there by using the hashtags. My reason for bringing it up here is I have a folder dedicated for a, a particular research project that will over time get to be pretty big. The, why did I put it in this vault and not put it into its own vault? Well, I thought about putting the, um, the research project in its own vault, but the reason that I put it into my vault for everything else is because I want to have that easy ability to link in and out of that project to other files. So I want to be able to like very quickly and very seamlessly make those links. And if I had my um, research project in its own separate vault, it would make it much more cumbersome and much less um, flexible to be able to seamlessly make those connections. So that's why I've, I've put it in this vault. I'm in the very early stages of this research project, so it may be the case that I eventually need to put it in its own vault. But right now, it's working great just having it as all those files are in that folder, and it's, um, I'm really loving it so far. This is going to be great! I love research! So as we move down, you'll notice that I have folder 2.00 to 2.03, day planners and day notes. I'll address these in a separate video. I'll be honest, I thought that I would actually be using Obsidian to try some day planning. I created a template. I have used a day planner app. Or, or day planner plugin. But in all honesty, I don't end up using it as much as I thought I would. I still have it there for daily notes. And sometimes I go in there and kind of structure out a day where I want to really be disciplined about how I'm moving through the day. But I already have my task management software. My um, I use OmniFocus. I'm using Fantastical for my calendar. And those two tools pretty much allow me to figure out what I'm going to be doing during the day. What's our schedule like? And I haven't really needed to use Obsidian for it. And I have a plan. But sometimes I do use it so it's there in the vault along with everything else. Now if I were to open up my notes folder, what you would see are some additional folders. One on conferences and talks, another on meetings. So this is an interesting shift in my workflow. I used to take all the notes that I had for meetings and I had them in Bear. And I'll put a link to that app for folks. I actually found it really useful. But once I started using Obsidian, again, it was this ability to make backlinks and easily make new files and new notes that I found was interesting to try out when I had a meeting. I might be in, having a conversation with someone, all of a sudden they make a reference to something. I'm like, oh, that's interesting, let me check that out more. And now I have my own note on it and it was, and it's a seamless process in Obsidian. So I started taking all my notes for meetings in Obsidian and I find it's really useful and I'll have that one file for all meetings with that person and then I'll just use the headers to kind of put the most recent date on the top and then kind of let it keep pushing things down. And then often I'll have some important links at the very top of the note that I find really useful. Uh, and that way I can kind of reference things really easily. It's a world of information at your fingertips. I could see how over time it might get a little unwieldy having all those notes in that folder, but since all my notes with people, people in meetings are in a folder, I don't have to worry about them cluttering up all the notes that I have on specific concepts. Now this is an interesting folder that I have teacher questions to answer. I mean, I'm in the field of music learning and teaching, so I often keep track of the kinds of questions that emerge from people in the field. And literally have 1,000 questions. But I do like to keep some notes on those kinds of questions. Some of these are less important. The reason why I put these notes into their own folder is because I don't want, you know, multiple thousands of notes. Too many notes. Cluttering up the other part of my vault, which is individual files, if I know that everything surrounding this particular initiative or this project is in a folder, it's out of the way of everything else. And I know if I need to know something related to that initiative, I know exactly where that is. I just go directly into that folder or I could search for it as well. It's more because I often like to go down and just scroll down my notes and take a look at there or maybe look at the graph view. But I like to be able to just kind of scroll down and look around what's there. And the fewer notes that I know that I wouldn't be looking for when I'm doing that, that are hidden away in a folder, the easier it makes my life in terms of finding things. I do have some folders that are specific to using Obsidian. So for instance, I have a templates folder and I use a lot of different templates. You'll see here, I have assignment templates, class plan templates. Um, I have these things I called idea docs. This is more of an organic process as I sign myself repeating things over and over again. I create a template and then put it into the template folder. Similarly, I like to keep all my attachments 
in an attachment file, it just keeps the clutter out of there. They're in the attachments folder, but they're embedded in the note that I need them, and that's where I'm looking for them is in that note, not as uh, a separate attachment in and of itself in the way that I use Obsidian. And then finally, in terms of the other organization, individual files, once I have everything organized where it needs to be in folders, I have all the rest of my files as just separate files in the vault without a particular organizational structure to them. It's, it's going to be alphabetical because that's what the default was for Obsidian for me. And I'm happy to just scroll through or search for any of these files that tend to be oriented around a particular concept. I don't want these hidden away in folders. I want them easily accessible. I don't want to try to create organizational structures around these notes. The way that I would be organizing them or the way that I might be kind of putting them into dialogue with other notes is through links and through the MOCs, those maps of content. But in the terms of a file structure, I'm happy to have notes about ideas, notes about concepts that are not specific to a particular project alone or out there without a folder just in the general vault. And so this is the structure that has worked really well for me. Again, some folders, MOCs, those maps of content, and then individual files. I find it's working for me really well. I'd be curious to hear how you organize your file structure. So if you have a particular system that you're using, you know, let me know in the comments, or if you have found something that's really useful to you, let other folks know in the comments. How do you do it? So there you go. That's how I set up the appearance of this obsidian to support my academic work and let me focus on the things that matter. I highly recommend obsidian as a fantastic tool for saving you time and forwarding your own work. Let me know how you set up Obsidian to work for you and let me know what questions you have in the comments. This video was really just about the setup. If you wanna dig deep with the ways of using Obsidian in academic work that I've experienced, you can check out my other videos. I'm making a playlist for my use of Obsidian in academic work, so check out the playlist. See if any of the approaches that I use might be helpful to you. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, I'm Evan Tobias. I'm on the music learning and teaching faculty at Arizona State University, and I support music educators of all kinds. Imagine possibilities for music learning and teaching, and then make those possibilities a reality.